What personality trait is someone normally proud of but really shouldn't be? I've found far too many people are proud of how aggressive they can be. I started noticing it in college. There's a certain type of socially awkward person who seems to feel that the angrier they can get in public, the more intimidating and impressive they are. It's really just secondhand embarrassing to watch a grown man or woman behave like that. I've really struggled with my anger issues in the past and it's so fricked up to me that someone would ever be proud of that. It's a very ugly part of myself that took years to work through and still slips up sometimes. It's not a good trait or quality, it's something very negative. Confrontational. I don't take any crap translates as I will make a huge fricking issue of things not worth getting upset over and embarrass everyone around me. Nobody's impressed by you throwing a shit fit over something an emotionally mature person would just shrug off. Being tough and threatening or intimidating to others to be cool or funny. It's not called being cool, it's called being an butthole. Just last week I almost got ran off the road by some guy in one of the biggest pickup trucks I've ever seen with a giant American flag on the back. I gotta say, I was super intimidated by the dollar sign 30k he must have dropped so he could finally feel physically intimidating towards strangers on the road. Being ditzy, it's more common than guys realize because it's not as obvious as it is in the movies but a lot of girls dumb themselves down to act cute for guys. When people consider themselves to be the deciders of what constitutes good taste not only for themselves, but for others. If you care a lot about what you do or consume, you're connoisseur. If you care a lot about what other people do or consume, you're snob. I am blunt. I'm a bee. I'm not afraid to speak my mind. Sorry if I hurt your feelings. Princess. Translation. I was never taught proper social skills. When people are upset with me I become defensive. I never learned to cure it and speak decently to people. I'm hoping people can like me despite being like this. Because changing myself is too hard and I rebel against the idea that people need to be pleasant to be liked. That translation literally made me clap at the screen. I applauded. It was so beautifully written and accurate that I needed to express my gratitude physically even though you couldn't hear me. Being extremely intelligent. People who boast about their intelligence typically lack any common sense and social graces and are miserable people to be around. One of my favorite examples, those people who talk about their SAT scores 10 plus years after college. Being competitive, it's fine in sports or academics, but when it's just for fun then it makes the person look like they have anger issues. Like when me and my friends are playing bar trivia, this one guy always screams and bangs the table if his team gets the answer wrong. He accuses people of cheating, argues with his teammates, and thinks he's hot crap too. Unfortunately, that guy is a part of our group, and it's not so fun when he comes out. I really don't get why being an introvert these days is supposed to be so awesome. I scored 100% for introversion in the MBTI, but I don't think that makes me some sort of special, aloof genius and I like people plenty. All it means is that I kind of run out of social energy about an hour into a party. I hate to answer the phone, and I am the last person you'd want to ask if you're interested in office gossip. Not sure if this is a personality trait, but being prideful of their nationality to the point that they use it as an excuse. George Carlin does a bit about how something like that you shouldn't be proud of because you don't have to work for it. It happens through luck of the draw. When people brag about how hard they work, I almost always feel bad for them. The exception to this rule is people with extremely rewarding work. If you get to work with the Large Hadron Collider or play music or something like that for a living, by all means continue living and breathing your job every waking moment. If you own a company and get to hold onto your profits, same deal. Most of the time, it's some corporate middle management type who will never get out of the company what he or she puts in working 60 plus hour weeks salaried. They're being exploited, and they're proud of it. I put in a fair work day, and then I go home and work really hard at my hobbies instead. I also feel bad for them. They've been raised into this mindset that your work ethic defines you and your worth. The problem is they also impose this lifestyle on everyone else and many decide that anyone who disagrees is lazy when in reality we could all work together to improve everyone's quality of life. A person's capacity to drink. I don't think it's something to be proud of. 
Show me someone who has the will to drink just the right amount. Now that's impressive. As a teenager I can sort of see why people are proud of it because they want to be grown up. But adults boasting about this supposed skill is really embarrassing. Being stubborn. Sticking to your guns when you are clearly wrong is not a good thing. Nor is refusing to budge on your position so that everybody else has to negotiate around you. Have a friend who is proud of her ability to talk over others in a conversation until they give up and let her dominate the conversation from then on. Extremely rude and annoying, but she has a very charitable spirit and I wouldn't trade her friendship for the world. Empty vessels make the most noise. People who describe themselves as weird are not really weird and just pretending to be. Believing maybe that it makes them cool. Basically anybody wearing a normal people scare me shirt. Surprised nobody have said it yet. Narcissism. The me before everyone else culture. And there is actually a difference between being a diagnosed narcissist. Can really ruin your life and you can't have relationships with other people. They can't see anything wrong with their behavior. And being an butthole with narcissist rays. Sadly our society idealize narcissism and it's apparently a good thing to thrive to be. A couple years ago I noticed a lot of people putting narcissist in their bias on social media. Like no, you're just an butthole who likes taking an inordinate number of selfies to get internet points and more followers. I'm not like other girls. I don't see how putting down and distancing yourself from your own gender does you any good, but you do you I guess. How progressive and hip they are. Most of the time people who latch onto the latest trend in order to stand out are quite shallow on the inside and need some kind of visible outside factor to make them unique. There's a big shift happening right now from telling girls that they're bossy to saying they're leaders instead. That's nice and all, but some people aren't good leaders. They're legitimately just bossy. People who are proud of that are annoying. Leaders don't boss people around. Leaders inspire people to want to do something of their own free will. Being able to put someone else down just because you don't like them or feel like you want to. You're not independent and commanding. You're a bag of dongs no one likes. Terrorizing others isn't a show of dominance. It makes you come off as childish and spoiled. Being bad at and hating small talk. It's fine not to like it, but bragging about hating it and being bad at it baffles me. Yeah, heaven forbid someone try to engage with you using some light conversation. Frick them, right? I find that men go with the flow types are often disorganized and have an inability to follow through with a plan. A certain amount of flexibility is a good thing, but I find that some laid back people are often kind of spineless and or meep around waiting for someone else to make it happen. Okay, but I don't think anyone is actually proud of that, more that they just accept it, since that's how they treat everything. Had a friend who was super arrogant when we were teenagers, which was ironic because he was fat and lazy as crap. Anyway, one day, I call him out on it because he was bragging that he could run for 2km straight very easily, when the reality was that he couldn't even run for 100 meters, while making fun of people who stopped to catch their breaths. He responds with at least, I'm confident in my abilities. Told him there's a difference between believing in yourself, and being a conceited butthole. I see a lot of women who are proud of being a bee clamoring that if you can't handle them at their worst, no, you are just a crappy person. When people exaggerate a personality tray of theirs and claim it as a disorder, kind of scatterbrained, I'm so ADHD drink during the week, you know me, I'm an alcoholic say rude things to people, that's my autism coming out. I'm probably oversensitive but I really don't like people making jokes over what others really struggle with. How logical they are. Logic is a great quality, but in my experience a person who has to tell others how logical he or she is, it means they're comfortable being a mean and hiding behind their logic. Not so much a personality trait but a behavior. Always being busy, multitasking, going on little or no sleep because you were so busy all night and got up so early. Don't be proud of this. Don't brag about this. You're doing several things poorly instead of doing one or two things well. You're doing your physical, mental and emotional health a massive disservice by stretching yourself so thin. One way or another, this always catches up with you. I won't tolerate any negativity in my life. If you're feeling down, they don't want to be around you. When they're feeling down, they come to you for help. 
the strong woman persona. My sister does this. Loves to emasculate and jump all over dudes who suggest she is anything other than a strong woman. Despite all the adversity in her life being entirely her fault. And despite her having multiple fallback people to help her out of her messes anytime. You'd think she was precious to hear her tell it. Plays victim anytime anyone disagrees with her. Draws lines in the sand. You know. The typical I hate drama basic B you see on FB every day but still insists she is a strong woman. Guess what? Strong women don't need to tell anyone about it. People know. A man who must say I am king is no king at all. Applies to a whole lot of situations. Now that I think about it. Being proud of being ignorant. For example, IDK how those vaccines work, but I know one thing for sure, is that I don't want my child injected with chemicals. I don't care who I'm around, I'm always myself. If you're the same person around your priest as you are around your friends, either you're incredibly boring or your priest struggles every day to not hate you. Having strong political opinions. It's exceedingly easy to have strong political opinions. Hating half the nation doesn't make you special. I think it's okay to have strong opinions as long as your facts line up and more importantly, as long as you are willing to listen to the other side and are genuinely willing to change your view if their arguments and facts make sense. Not caring about what other people think. That's no way to go through life unless you're living out in a cabin 100 miles from your nearest neighbors. Nah, I think there's a line to draw with this. Up to a certain point. Not worrying about what people think about you is very very useful. People who worry whether those they pass in the street think their dress sense is bad have just as hard a time as people who care so little they genuinely do have bad dress sense. I don't give a crap what you think of me. I'll say whatever is on my mind. I'm an butthole. Don't let the door hit you on your way out. I just call it like I see it. Tact, discretion and critical thinking skills are traits you should strive for. Literally blurting out every thought that pops up in your brain is not. And also, call it like I see it is usually a thinly veiled cover for I enjoy saying bigoted, hateful things because I desperately need attention. I'm ADD. I'm OCD. Usually they've not been diagnosed nor do they know the depths of the problems these disorders bring those who are. I have no filter, and I just say what I think about XYZ. I differentiate these folks from the brutally honest crowd. BH tends to be more about criticism where I feel like the filterless will say just about any trite, insensitive or ignorant thing comes to mind. This often seems to mean something they think will get attention. Nearly every personality trait is only good when it comes in the right amount. You should be honest, but not rude. You should do what other people want but also have some backbone. You should have willpower, but not be stubborn. You should have something to say, but let others talk as well. You should be confident, not arrogant. It's called the golden mean. Faith in extraordinary claims. It's just a giant hole in the bull's firewall. Guys, nobody's is perfect, but it's not a good idea to yank it open like goats and smile about it all the while. The people who say, I just call them like I see em. Which is just a blanket justification to be a judgmental prick. Usually, a tinge of prejudice towards all groups they don't self-identify with. That is, blue collar worker, skater, or stay at home parent. Being a bee or an butthole. If you're going to brag about how being a bee or an butthole makes you a tough badass person. Don't be surprised when some people don't want to be around you, when your partner breaks up with you, or when an employer doesn't want to hire you. There's going to be consequences with unkind behavior. I've met quite a few people that think showing emotion is weakness. Not in the typical way people think, but rather it annoys them that you are down. A lot of people admire others that are stoic and that shows little emotion with decision making, and yet get angry when they don't show enough emotion on heated topics. Um, which is it? My one friend, who's a girl, she thinks it's cute she hulks out when she gets angry and throws things around. No B you're just violent, just because your girl doesn't make it better. I knew this girl in college who, after telling an elaborate story about her childhood filled with abuse and hardship, admitted to making the entire story up. Later on she said proudly, it's so easy for me to lie to people. I can come up with fake stories about my life and people will believe me. 
being politically incorrect, at least for those who define that term as punching down, that is, making fun of, if not being outright abusive towards, members of a lower or disadvantaged class. Being enumerate. Too many people go lol well. I can't math xd when presented with numbers. Imagine showing someone a paper and they go lol I can't read this anyway. I can't words xd. They would be too embarrassed to tell anyone they are illiterate. But for some reason, being enumerate is perfectly acceptable in society. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.